So I needed to stop and stretch my legs, so I figured I would show you guys Camel Rock. I don't think I've stopped here in a video yet, even though it's a really easy on and off. So yeah, this is Camel Rock. In case you guys didn't realize, it looks like a camel. Normally I try to come to a place like this on like a Thursday or sometime during the week, just so it's less busy. It's a little bit busy today, but it doesn't seem that bad um, as far as the cars in the parking lot goes. As always, I'm gonna check out the uh, museum first and kind of see what's all around here. These are always some of my favorite things to look at at the museums because that's like a model of what it would have looked like in the year 1400, which is just crazy. So the, uh, the main loop out here is about a mile and a half. Um, I'm gonna add a hike. It's an out and back to a waterfall. That's going to bring it up to about four and a half miles, I believe, if, I, if I'm reading the map right. About four and a half miles um, is what I'm looking at doing today and uh, taking you guys along for the adventure. This is a beautiful area, though. I have never been here. What remains of the village around you was occupied five to 700 years ago. It had over 400 rooms and stood two stories tall. About 100 people may have lived here with another 400 residing in the cliff dwellings above. This, this is so cool. So this is the uh, hardest part so far. So there are stairs out here for those of you that maybe can't do stairs or it takes you a while. There's a bar and everything. So just take your time and you'll be able to make this hike happen. So you got a couple ladders set up. You can kind of climb up into the hoodoo and see what's up. So you can see they were obviously just for sleeping, I guess. I don't know what the hole's for. I guess maybe a fire because they're soot on the ceiling. So I don't have ladders into all of them, but there is soot in like all of these little nooks and crannies up there. And then it says that this was reconstructed in the 1900s, showing what it would have looked like with a little front house. But you can't go in there. So I think that's pretty cool that they would have built like houses just on the front of the front of the face here. These actually look intentional, like steps, to get up into that one. Okay, this one is actually pretty cool. You can get all the way in this one and check it out, like little alcove there, little steps. All of these that I've seen have had these and I don't know if they were for fire or what. There's your view looking out though. I definitely don't know what I'm talking about, but doesn't this seem like the perfect stone for grinding? Like grinding corn? These stairs on the way down on the back side do get a little bit steep and sketchy there. Just a forewarning. So this right here is an absolute bummer. So it says, this takes you to the cave kiva, which is a place of you know, worship for these ancient peoples, you know, it says on the sign, it deserves your respect. And they had to close it because somebody went in there and they tagged or they did whatever. Um, if you come to these places, leave them. I don't know why that's so hard to understand. 
that's a real bummer because that's probably one of the top things to see here. I bet, I bet you it's amazing in there. So this one right here is known as the long house. So you got to imagine all of this built out like that one that they recreated all the way along this cliff face here. Wow, so it actually keeps going too. That first part that I showed you is around the bend, but then all of this would have still been built out too. So you're talking, and then it goes, I mean, it goes all the way, all the way along the whole thing. There's a, like a marking, like a petroglyph or whatever those are called right there. And then you can see where they would have had like the beams for the house. That one was like a three-story. So there's petroglyphs. Like, there's so many. You can barely see a lot of them. But there's so many along the, the wall. So I saw a painting just like this at the Gila Cliff Dwellings as well, which is way down south compared to this. Um, the one at the Gila, you couldn't quite make out as well as that. But that's pretty crazy. I'm gonna head up to the alcove house now. It says that uh, only accessible with ladders and stairs. If you have a fear of heights or health problems, you should not attempt the climb. I was a little bit sketched out here because I saw that. I was like, ah, oh, I don't really know if I want to get my boots wet. It is not that cold. You know, it's like a 40 degree day. Kind of nice for a hike, but they got the little bridge. They're still building the big bridge, it looks like. This hike just by itself is actually really pretty. <laughs> I'm enjoying the walk. All right, so I'm beginning the ascent of this alcove house. This kind of stuff trips me out because they built something up here a thousand years ago or 700 years ago or however many years ago these guys were up here building. And uh, I know there's several of these ladders to get up and down. Second ladder. Oh my God. I'm so out of breath right now. We're gonna try to get through this. This is what I'm talking about, though. So there's a kiva here, and there was a picture of this alcove house where they think, you know, how it would have been. And they built those cliff houses in up here. And some of those ladders, two of those ladders are like 45 rungs. I'll show you guys a little bit better on the way down, but this is up here, and it's steep. So how in the world, how do you get these rocks put it all together, carry up the wood beams, stack it all in. Like I understand that this cliff is probably a lot different than it was 800 years ago. I get that part, but nonetheless, this is up here. It is up here and it is a heck of a climb to get up here. And um, I mean, it's cool. It's really special looking out, but I just wanna know how in the world they did it. This is ladder number four, and thankfully it's a mini one. So this right here is the second tallest ladder. It's the third ladder you have to climb, and it is at least 30 rungs. I'm not gonna count them all. That's how many there is. Give you guys a view from down here. So your first ladder's here. You got your second ladder there, which is actually the tall one. Third one there, you can see somebody on, and then the fourth one. This one right here, um, I climb ladders every single day for work, and that one right there, my legs were shaking on. So adding the alcove house is one additional mile round trip, half a mile there, half a mile back. So if you do just like the cliff dwellings and the alcove house, if my math is correct, it puts you right at about 2.75 to three miles, somewhere in there. I don't think this trail is 100% half a mile because it feels a little bit longer than that to me. So I would say you'd be right at about three miles of hiking. Um, it's taken me two hours. So two hours to hike everything and stop and see everything and film my videos and stuff like that. So not too bad. I'm standing in an ecotone. Frijoles Canyon is an ecotone, a transition zone where plants and animals from several biological communities mingle. Because of this biological diversity, the Anasazi probably found ecotones productive places to hunt and gather food or medicinal herbs. So if you're going to do the falls trail, you got to stay on this side of the creek and walk down like this road. And then you'll find it over here after you come out of the, uh, what's it called? 
what was it? The Alcove House. So you'll find the Falls Trail. This is a solid couple of miles out and back. So this one will take me a little while, but I'm hoping that the waterfall at the end of it is running and worth it. This is gorgeous through here as well. So I was under the impression, I thought that I could get closer to it, but the way that it's carved out, obviously that makes sense that, you know, you can only really walk to an overhang of this bad boy because it's just, it's too steep to try to get down there. But that's a huge waterfall. That's pretty sick. I'm gonna stop at this little scenic overlook that they have and then go check into the campground. Oh, that's cool. They got one of those little uh, sightseer things. I'm always afraid to put my eyes on those things. Like, I never want to actually touch my face to them. Um, but it's cool that they have them. This is cool because you can see all the way up the valley too, which is really cool. And the cliff dwellings are right in there. Gorgeous. Site number seven is looking pretty good to me, so that's where I'm going to be camping. But I got to go back to the walk back to the little thing to pay. I don't know how much it is, but they got one of those automatic ticket thingy, my jigs, food storage regulations. There's some bears up here. Got a little fire pit too, so if I can gather me some wood, I'll get to have a little fire tonight, maybe. Man, all that hiking made me super hungry. I might end up eating two of these today. Let's see what I got. What does that say? Tuna. Um, I think that's a good lunch, probably. So I'm going to go with tuna for lunch. Got uh, snack crackers in this one. Beverage base. I'll end up using that later. Cheese, of course. I'll heat this up if I use it today. Mayo, that's not gonna get eaten. Lemon poppy cake, plain tortillas, and Starkist Tuna Creations lemon pepper. Never heard of an outdoors pouch of tuna before, um, but there's nothing to cook in this MRE, which makes it the perfect selection for lunch. I'm glad that that one was kind of sitting right on top. And then I'm gonna end up having another one here in a couple of hours, probably. I'm hungry after all that hiking, so. I didn't stop and do my normal huevos rancheros for this video. So I'm hungry. I was able to get a little bit of wood, have a little bit of a fire tonight, and I'll show you guys kind of just going to be camping up in the area right up here. The campground's really, really quiet today. I think just, you know, it's still too cold for most people, but not for me. Nice. Check it out, something swung by. Some tracks there. Cool. Anyway, it's Super Bowl Sunday, so I am going to jet back home, and uh, I'll see you guys next week for another episode. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for being here, and appreciate you guys, and see you later.